lesson. So our second lesson for today deals with the quadratic formula. It's gonna be really similar to what you did in algebra one. We're just gonna change one little thing up to make things better. We're always working to improve our skills and make things better. So quadratic formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus four ac all over to a. Some of you probably have that memorized by now ingrained in your brain. First thing we're going to do is review simplifying radicals. So you should have done this, but you probably haven't done it in conjunction with the um, quadratic formula. Come on, Chris. So if I gave you the square root of 72 and I ask you to simplify it, we're going to start by kind of making a factor tree for 72. We need to figure out what numbers multiply together to give us 72, but we want one of them to be on our perfect squares list. So remember our, whoops, our perfect squares, one, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, what did I miss? Oh, you're, hold up, hold up, hold up. 81, 100, the list goes on and on and on and on and on forever. That's just one through 100. What's that? Okay, look for the people online. Oh yeah, I probably. Yep, so we want to find, the biggest number that's on this list that evenly goes into 72. So biggest one, Courtney already said one, but it's not the biggest one. So Courtney said set or eight. eight. Courtney said eight times set or eight times nine to begin with. Yes, nine's on your list, but there is a bigger number that we could use. So again. You always want to use the biggest perfect square. So I can break 72 up into 2 times 36. Agreed? 2 times 36 is 72? If you don't believe me, check your calculator or do some math on your paper. 36 is the biggest number I can divide 72 by that falls on my perfect squares list. What that means is we can take the square root of 72 and break it up into the square root of two times the square root of 36. Conveniently, we know what the square root of 36 is. What is the square root of 36? Six, so this is gonna come out and become plain old six. Do we know what the square root of two is? No, it's some nasty decimal. So we would simplify the square root of 72 to be six times the square root of two. So that is simplifying that radical. We simplify the square root of 72 to be six times the square root of two. Make sense? That's it, that's simplifying the radical. We're gonna add that to the quadratic formula in a little bit that you already know how to do. I told you, Courtney. <laughs> Bigger, bigger than four. So Keith's trying to jump ahead to the next one. Keith, wait, what did you say? Oh, uh, you told me the answer. Ah, uh, you are on the right track. So Keith broke this up into 16 times 10. Is 16 times 10, 160? Yes. Is one of those numbers a perfect square? 16 is a perfect square. What is the square root of 16? Four. Four? Do we know the square root of 10? We don't know the square root of 10. It's some <coughs> ugly decimal. This would be the simplified answer. So four times the square root of 10 is equivalent to the square root of 160. Don't believe me, type them both in your calculator and you'll get the same decimals. Anybody remember doing this before? You should, you should have already done this. It's just, it's probably been a while. I think Josh does it now, the one if you had Josh. 
probably 10 years for some of you. Me, like eight weeks ago. <laughs> All right. So again, here's your quadratic formula. I believe it's on your reference sheet for Ivy Tech even. So we're going to use the quadratic formula to solve this quadratic. First thing we're going to do, make sure you have zero on one side. We have zero right here. We're good to go. So we can list A, B, and C. A is 1, B is negative 6, and C is positive 8. So far, so good? Now we're gonna jump into the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula is X equals one big old fraction. For the top of that fraction, I need negative B. What would I write for negative B? What is it? negative parenthesis negative six actually? Positive six. We want the opposite of B. So the negative B in the formula says, hey, go to B and change the sign. It was negative, we're gonna write positive. Yep, if it was positive, we would write a negative. Then comes the plus or minus sign with the big old square root. I just go ahead while I write the big old square root, put in all the parentheses that I'm gonna need to put information in. So I just make it a habit to fill this out just like this. Sometimes I actually go ahead and write this on the bottom. And then I just have to go through and plug in the numbers in the correct position. So first thing I need underneath my square root is B squared. What is B? What? Negative six. So the negative six must go in parentheses. Very, very, very important that you're using parentheses. Minus four times A. What is A? What is C? Eight. All divided by... <laughs> two times a, which is again, one. I promise you on your test, if you write this down, you're getting one point automatically. You can ruin the entire problem, but you get one point for showing me that you can plug things into the quadratic formula correctly. Seem fair? Keeps looking at me like you've lost your mind. All right. The next thing we want to do in order to start solving this, we're going to type just this highlighted portion in our calculator. Notice I did not highlight the square root. All I want you to type is the parentheses, negative six, close your parentheses squared, minus four times one times eight. So just that portion, I want you to type in your calculator. Use your calculator, type just that highlighted portion into your calculator. Anybody else get four? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Since we're in agreement that we got four when we typed this highlighted region in, I went ahead and brought it down. It's still in the square root. The only other thing I did was I went ahead and multiplied the two times the one in the denominator. So everything else just got brought down. It looks a lot nicer now, doesn't it? Now's where the fun part happens. Do we know the square root of four? Yes. Yes, so this whole piece right here is going to come out and become two. So now I have six plus or minus two over two. Do we understand why we just did that? So we took the square root of four, since so four is a perfect square, square root of four becomes two. So I went back and I took the square root of four out of our place. Now I have two problems I need to solve. So now we're going to break this apart into two problems. We have the first problem, 6 plus 2 divided by 2. And then we have another problem, 6 minus 2 divided by 2. That is coming from 
this plus or minus sign right here. So we have two problems within this problem we need to solve because of the plus or minus sign that we were given. Now we just want to simplify both of them individually. So if I look at the top one, six plus two is eight divided by two gives us an answer of four. For the second one, we're going to take six minus two, which is four, divided by two, which is two. So we have two solutions. I just left the chat. One more. We got two answers, four and two. You can eat them if you try it. Questions on this one? So again, we're gonna start off easy and then we're gonna work our way up. What? That's like one, three, four. Could have done this in one, five, six, seven steps. That's it. The hardest part is these three. If you wanna go there. All right, making things a little bit harder on the next page. So we want to get this in standard form. My suggestion is you always keep the x squared term positive. So I would subtract 6 and add 2x to both sides. Easier. Making sure that when I write my equation, I want the left hand side standard form. So 5x squared plus 2x minus 6. So now I have 5x squared plus 2x minus 6 equals 0. It's in standard form, 0 on one side, so I can identify that a is 5, b is 2, and c is negative 6. Now I'm going to fill out the quadratic formula. X equals negative B. What is the opposite of B? Negative 2 plus or minus that big long square root. Again, once I get started, I can fill out a bunch of parentheses where I need to plug in information. So that negative two came from this term right here. So we wanted negative b, which means the opposite of whatever b is. And we said that b was two, so we wrote a negative two for the opposite. Then I need b squared, so two squared minus four times a times c, all divided by two times a, which is five. So one point automatically for writing that down for me. Are we okay up to this point? Anybody confused? All right, next step, we're going to take just this information right here and type it in our calculator. We're not typing in the square root, just the two squared minus four times five times negative six. So Nathan's saying 124. Anybody else get that? Ask yourself, is 124 a perfect square? No, it's not. So this is where the simplification is going to have to happen. So out to the side, we're going to start with the square root of 124. And we're going to have to break it apart 
into two numbers that multiply to give us 124, but one of them must be a perfect square. So if you have no idea, absolutely no idea, what two numbers multiply to give you 124, you can so you can start and just divide 124 and divide it by these numbers working up your list until you get one that's not decimal. So if you take 124 falls right here, if I divide it by 121, I'm going to get a decimal. If I divide 124 by 100, I get a decimal. If I take 124 and divide it by 81, I get a decimal. And you keep going all the way up your list, you're actually going to go all the way up until you hit four. So four times 31. So four times 31 multiplies to give us 124, and four happens to be the biggest perfect square. Your calculator does this for you. What's the square root of four? Uh -huh. So since four is a perfect square, we know that the square root of four is two. So two times the square root of 31 is what we're gonna go back into our problem with two square root 31 over So in this case, I kind of like problems that end up like this because we're not going to separate them into two problems. All we want to do is see if we can reduce. When you reduce, you reduce these three numbers. Never, ever, ever do you reduce the number that's inside the square root. So look at 2, 2, and 10. Can you reduce them? Yes. So you're going to divide those three numbers by 2 to get your final answer, negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 31 divided by that right there is your final answer. No need to split it apart into two answers. So if, you're, if your square root stays, your answer stays stuck together. You don't have to find two separate ones. Questions on this one? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I divided them both. So this one became a one. It's technically right there. We just don't write it. So you could put that one in there. It's the same thing. Or you can leave it out and it's also the same thing. Because one times the square root of 31 is still the square root of 31. Yep. So both of these cubes became ones. I just didn't write the one that was in front of the square root of 31. So it's not necessary. So the negative one out front here is necessary. Other questions, concerns? Okay. Let's do another one. You tell me, what should we do first? Bring over the 11. So we're going to subtract 11 from both sides, making sure that we write in standard form. So I'm going to have 2x squared plus 8x minus 11 equals 0.
All right, so now we can identify A, B, and C. A is going to be two, B is going to be eight, and C is going to be negative 11. So now we're going to jump to our quadratic formula x equals negative b, so the opposite of positive 8 is negative 8, plus or minus, then that big long square root. Where? or minus the square root of, you just told me 152, yeah. all over four. Is 152 a perfect square? No. We're going to have to take 152 and break it up into two numbers that multiply to give us 152, and one of them has to be a perfect square. Four and 38 sounds great, Kenny. So four times 38 is 152. Four is a perfect square. Square root of four is two. So I'm going to convert the square root of 52 to be equivalent to two times the square root of 38. So I'm gonna go up here. So negative eight plus or minus two square root 38 divided by four. And again, our square roots left in the problem. So all we can do now is check to see if we can reduce. Am I allowed to reduce the eight to 38 and four? No, you cannot touch the 38. You can't touch the 38. So look at the other three numbers. Can you reduce them? Yep, so you're gonna reduce again by two, that's going to give us negative four plus or minus one square root 38 over two. Again, you could write that one in front of the square root of 38, but it's definitely not sensible. That right there is your final answer. So negative four plus or minus one square root 38 all over two. Questions or concerns? 